Okay, and here in phase three, I have two more students joining me from our Sustainability and Renewable Energy Systems major. Mark Lieb. Uh, Jacob Kaler. And here, we're going to demonstrate uh, just some of the, the processing and testing that has to be done. So we have our mixture of fatty methyl esters, and they're still, even though we've tried our hardest, we've tried our best not to raise the temperature of the oil and not to get any of those free fatty acids in here, there's always still going to be some. Uh, what happens, triglycerides break apart, entropy takes place, there's always some amount of free fatty acids in our mixture. And we know that when those free fatty acids combine, with our catalyst, in this case potassium hydroxide, they form soap. Soap is a fat, free fatty acid, and a strong base, and then it makes soap. So even though it's really hard to see, and this looks like a completely homogeneous uh, mixture, it's not entirely the truth, right? Inside of here, there's some soap, and we need to figure out how much soap and then pull it out. So step three of the biodiesel making process is to go through a step, uh, a series of steps to separate out maybe any extra catalyst that we have or extra methanol, any soap that we've made, any more fatty acids that haven't been turned into soap. Um, this is that filtration step. So what I've got um, laid out before us, what these two students will demonstrate, is how we do a titration to figure out the amount of soap content in this sample so that we know how much is there and then we can extract it out, wash it out of the sample, and then be left with 100% clean biodiesel. So let's get started. So we start by putting uh, 10 milliliters of the hydro... No, it's 30. Oh, oh. 30, 30 milliliters of the hydrochloric acid into this graduated cylinder and then we add four drops of the bromethylide uh, indicator into that and then we have also measured out five milliliters of our biodiesel fuel stock and we add that into this mix shake that around a little bit and then in here we have our alcohol mixture and we have our alcohol uh, mixture and we uh, add a couple drops of that in, into there until that turns into a bluish color. Just a couple drops at a time. And what's, once that changes color for about 30 seconds, that's how we know we've completed the process. And then we record how much we've used in that process. And it's quite neat, you know, this is a, a really simple process that we can do by mixing it and looking at how much acid was required to change the color. So one thing that we, we skipped over, but what this does, this bromomethyl blue, this indicator, is it helps us to see a pH change. When something goes from basic to acidic or acidic to basic, we can, we can physically see that change with our eyes. So by knowing how much we start off with, right, how much acid we start off with, in this case hydrochloric acid, and how much it took to add to our mixture to get that color change, we can determine how much that acid uh, required to get that color change, to get that pH change, and then from there extrapolate how much soap we've made in the process. So when we finish with this step, the rest of this feedstock will be, as I mentioned, taken to separate out that soap, those extra catalysts, anything else that may be in there. Uh, at the end of the day, there are 28 standards that this fuel will have to go through to be tested, to be certified and ready to be put into a car or a truck. But, but largely speaking, this is a very simple process. Uh, this whole process, we call it transesterification, but really it's been broken down into many different parts. This process is, is fairly new. It was created or maybe refined, I should say, uh, in the 1980s by a South African uh, team of scientists. But now we have that. It really streamlines this process. So is it possible to make biodiesel? Absolutely. Is it possible to make biodiesel from, we call them first generation biofuel crops, meaning soybean uh, or sunflower, things that we also use for food, olive oil technically you could use it. It is, but a better option is to make it from something that doesn't compete with our food stream, that farmers can put on the field after 
they have finished with their growing regimen all summer long that helps with soil erosion and helps take up those extra nutrients in spring works as an early pollinator and then can produce all of the soil that we can make into biodiesel to really help improve on farm finance and give another kind of value added, um, value added from that land. So I hope that you liked the video and that it was informative and educational and now you have a better idea of what the difference between fossil fuel based diesel is and biodiesel, why it does make a large environmental contribution what transesterification looks like, and how we make biodiesel from Pennycress. Thank you.